morning everybody welcome back to the channel uh, this week I just thought we'd have a little bit of a tour see some of the crops uh, see how things are progressing as we're moving towards harvest I hope you enjoy it so this is the field of spring beans that uh, we drilled into grass you can see the tram line there but as you move down to the side, you can see, let me just to zoom in a bit. You can see that pretty much the rows are filling in. You can barely see the gaps between the rows now. If you come down to here, you can see the grass. This is a bit, um, a bit sparse on this headland section here. But it gives you an impression of just how good the ground coverage is provided by the grass swath it really covers the ground stops um, stops the weeds coming through and leaves a very clean finish so we're very pleased with this results uh, drilled with the claydon really pleased thank you so in this field i just wanted to go through the difference in performance between a spring wheat and a winter wheat and of course a, a winter wheat is planted in the autumn or planted in the winter and a spring wheat is planted in the spring it's not when it was harvested it's when it's uh, planted so a quick uh, explanation of this field so this is a field of lennox we like to grow lennox which is a spring wheat as a flexi wheat whereby it can be planted in the autumn, late in the autumn if we get a chance, and then in the spring if, it, uh, if we don't get the opportunity. I wanted to stop here to show you this particular field because in this bottom corner, we all know it was a very wet autumn. Um, the whole field was planted, but this strip of headland died uh, with just sheer wet so even though it was planted at the same time this bit died um we came back and we just pulled through here with the sky and just stitched in more lennox spring wheat and i really wanted to show you the difference because it's very rare that you get to see both elements in the same field but what we found is true spring wheat versus uh, uh winter spring wheat or flexi wheat as we call it um you're talking about a two ton yield difference so this will be six six and a half and that will be eight and a half so that is why we grow it as a flexi wheat rather than a true spring wheat it's also worth saying that uh, last night we were forecast seven mil we did get five so not as much as we were hoping for but at least we've had some rain overnight. This week on Twitter, I posted a picture which showed that in East Anglia, they've had the sunniest May ever recorded. In fact, it's been the sunniest month ever recorded since 1929 uh, at 160% of average sunshine. So we really have had a very dry and sunny period. It's probably done wonders for our solar park, not that we get to benefit because it's on a, a rental agreement, but we do have some slow solar panels on our own grain shed, so that will certainly help. But it's been very dry at the same time, and some of our crops, even though we're on heavy land, some of them, certainly the spring crops, will certainly benefit from the rain we had yesterday. So as the calendar turns towards June, so our focus changes uh, towards harvest. Some of our crops now are looking very close to harvest. Here you can see uh, we've got to Thames Water. This will be the O'Neill's uh, digger in for Thames Water sewage cake. Uh, we generally apply it after rape, which gives them the biggest, longest window to apply before our cultivations. Um, this is a field of rape that was planted with the sky it's very even uh, very pleased with this this is of course had uh, an application of digestate in the autumn but other than that it's been grown very conventionally 
So behind me is some rape. This, as opposed to the previous picture, was established with the Coon Aero. And one of the problems we have is where is flooding. Now this whole area here was taken out by flood water. And I just wanted to show you this. This is where all the residue from this part of the field was all washed up to the side. This is all the residue, straw, cut straw, chopped straw, all laid, left on the edge of the lake. So all of this area was lake. And I've had this before. Orsi drape seems to be very susceptible to winter flooding. It doesn't like having wet roots. And um, it's taken out a large percentage of this, this field, which is very disappointing. As our focus moves towards harvest, one of our things that we are thinking about, of course, is cropping, cropping for the next year. And this year, I suppose it's a bit different because we're really looking into countryside stewardship schemes and trying to think about ways that we can leverage our regenerative agriculture practices and trying to fit them in with uh, CSS, Countryside Stewardship, uh, CSS options in order that we can um, try and get paid f more for the good that we're doing in either carbon capture or resting and improving our soils. So uh, it's making that uh, process a little bit different this year and a bit more interesting. So there's an old farming saying that uh, all seed rape is a worry from the moment it goes into the ground till the moment it goes in your shed. Uh, this relates to the fact that you have cabbage stem flea beetle when it's first uh, planted, then you have slugs, then you have pigeons through the winter, and then in the spring, another chance uh, cabbage stem flea beetle larvae to worry about. And this year we've had mealy, uh, mealy aphids, in the build up to harvest so now it'll start to ripen we're in the final stages leaf shed has occurred um, and now the as it dries out you'll worry about thunderstorms and uh, pod shatter so it is uh, it's not the easiest crop on the uh, blood pressure and uh, I think in the area there's been a dramatic reduction in the amount of rape being grown and I think it's, it's in our rotation it's under serious pressure going forward. So last week we had a discussion about alleopathy and the way that black grass can suppress establishment of wheat. This field was put into a fallow last year because of the sheer black grass burden you can see black grass here, but as we pan across, you'll see a really bad chunk here. This is a flexi wheat. It will have been drilled probably mid-October. And although it had its pre-ems, we didn't manage to get avidex on it. It probably is a little bit disappointing the amount of black grass we've got in it. Um, but just to say, not everything on the farm turns out perfect. So we are about 20 metres away now from that black grass infested flexi wheat. This is true spring wheat. It's part of the same block. The reason we couldn't plant it was because this field was too wet. In fact, that far corner there is, is horrific. Um, and I just wanted to dwell on these little boxes, uh, beehives. I think we've got, we have about 10 hives here. We have hives sprinkled all over the farm. Um, we do it, to, it's possible to buy it through our website, farmgate to plate.co.uk. And um, for those who say farmers don't care for the environment or, or their bees, we use very few, very few insecticides now. Uh, we like to look after the beneficial insects, part of the regenerative agriculture and as part of our integrated pest management strategy. And it also has a profound effect on when we spray our crops. We don't like to spray uh, when it's too warm and the bees might be active, especially in flowering plants like those uh, beans. 